morning, everyone. Welcome to our weekly update. Today is Monday, April 5th. My name is Maura Curran, one of the members of the select board. And this is our weekly COVID update. Before we uh, turn it over to Jim and Bill, I just wanted to remind some folks that there's a select board meeting tomorrow, uh, April 6th. Um, pretty, pretty routine meeting. We're covering a couple of important topics, though. Um, there's some water use offset discussion from our water commission that certainly will be interesting, as well as an update from our DEI committee on their progress and goals. So we look forward to both those updates. And then this Thursday, we also have the moderators meeting, which is the 8th at 2 p.m. And that will be Zoomed live as well. And then most importantly, next Monday, April 12th, is our annual town meeting. We hope folks can attend. It's gonna be at the Situate High School starting at 7 p.m. in the gym. So. Uh, Busy week this week in preparation for Monday. I hope everybody had a great weekend and I'll just turn it over to Jim for the most recent numbers. Jim? So good morning. Let's start with the changes in the vaccine eligibility. As of today, residents 55 and over and residents with one comorbidity are now eligible to sign up for the vaccine. Uh, they have added some new uh, comorbidities to the list that make you eligible. So if you have any questions, you should go to MassGov and look at what those are and determine whether you are eligible for a vaccine or not. If you are, you can go to vaccinesignup.mass.gov and get on the list for a vaccine at one of the mass vaccination sites. Uh, through this process, you sign up and when they have a appointment available, you get notified and you decide whether or not you can take that. That's only for the mass vaccination sites. Again, CVS, uh, Marshfield Fairgrounds, they make appointments available as they're notified that they have vaccine coming in. 211 for the state, uh, call the local council on aging if you are having trouble getting a vaccine. Uh, as of the 29th, it is scheduled to be open up for everybody over the age of 16. So those of you over 55 with one comorbidity, uh, my advice is to get in and get on the list now before it opens up to basically everybody else in the Commonwealth in a couple weeks. Um, homebound residents should go to the state website or call 844-771. 1628, and you can begin the process of signing up to have a vaccination at your home if you are unable to get out. Uh, since last Monday, we had another 38 cases that matches last week's total. Uh, however, according to the health agent, we have multiple cases of homes with multiple positive tests, two or three or four positive tests in a home. So it's uh, showing it's going in through families. It is still around. Our positivity rating was up to 2.72 up from 2.32 the previous week. So we are still in that 20 to 40 range for, for positive cases and about between two and three for the percentage. We are still yellow. Uh, the state is up uh, to 2.24, up from 2.28 the previous week. So we need to continue to be vigilant. I know it's nice out, people wanna get out, but you still need to wear your masks. You still need to be vigilant. You still need to wash your hands. We are not out of the woods yet. I did see a report today that the state is expecting a shipment of around 100,000 Johnson & Johnson vaccines next week. Uh, that's 100,000 people who are vaccinated because it only takes the one shot. So once those start coming out in large numbers, uh, we'll see the number of people fully vaccinated start to skyrocket. So that's a good thing. Another good thing, the Widow's Walk Golf Course is open. I drove by Saturday, the parking lot was packed. So if you wanna play golf, the golf course is open for golfers. The clubhouse is closed for renovations. We will be working on that hopefully after town meeting. Uh, we are working on getting some food trucks or a food truck to get on there. That'll probably be a little bit later in the season. But if you wanna play golf, the golf course is open. It looks like it's in great shape. So please get out and enjoy the golf course as long as you follow the current COVID protocols. Uh, starting today also, the Hummer Rock Fire Station crew will be moving from the fire station up to temporary quarters on fourth cliff they'll be staying at the air force recreation base while we do a reconstruction of the hummer rock fire station the demolition of the fire station will commence either this week or starting next monday that's up to the contractor the uh, project is expected to be completed by october but being able to use the air base and house our firefighters up there uh, means that we will still keep our firefighter presence in hummer rock which is extremely important especially in the summer months so we want to thank the air base for that and people can keep track of the ongoing construction. Uh, that project was originally just supposed to be a new bay and a renovation of the uh, living quarters. 
And then at the end of the winter in 2018, that station got completely flooded, which means we had to now put the station up on piers uh, and it's gonna be almost a completely new station when it's done. So we're looking forward to that, but you will see the fire truck uh, park in a temporary structure and the two firefighters will be staying up at the air base. Another project that's kicking off starting today is uh, the reconstruction of the Peggy Beach parking lot. We'll be taking up the existing asphalt that's there, putting down a new sub base and then putting the asphalt back down in the existing area where the asphalt is. Uh, we cannot extend the asphalt to cover that whole parking lot because of conservation restrictions, but we will pave that portion that we can and put a new subgrade down in the rest of the parking lot. Uh, I know some people are wondering why we're doing that now. And the answer is we have to wait until the asphalt plants open in the spring to get sufficient asphalt to do a job of that size. So that project will take less than a month. It'll be done by the end of April and we'll have a nice new parking lot there for the summer months for people to enjoy. Cole Parkway is still ongoing. Uh, if you were down there this weekend, uh, we had um, a couple of ospreys trying to make a nest on one of the cranes. Uh, it was kind of interesting, but uh, as long as the ospreys have not laid their eggs on a crane, you have the ability to move that nest. So we had the environmental police down there and we removed the nest, but we'll be taking precautions to keep the ospreys off the cranes. Uh, once they lay an egg, then the crane can't move, the barge can't move, and the barge is right smack in the middle of our marina right now. So it's a good thing we caught that, but that project is on schedule and will be completed in time for the boating season, which is May 15th for our marina. Uh, Cedar Point, still going. Again, we still ask people, please to add a Cedar Point. It's a very narrow area. It's a very deep trench. It's a very complex construction project, and we don't need people walking or riding out there during construction time if they don't need to be. So when the construction is done for the day or on the weekends, it's fine. But during the week, please try to stay out of Cedar Point as much as possible. If you go up to Senior Center this week, you'll see the construction fence is down. The landscaping is ongoing. Uh, it's starting to look pretty good outside, so we're happy with that. The staff is in there. The Veterans Agent is in there. Uh, you can go to the Senior Center if you would like. We prefer at this point that you continue to do it by appointment. We don't want people showing up and being told they can't come in because we've reached our, our COVID maximum. So please continue to make appointments. But if it's an emergency or you need to see someone, you do have the ability now uh, to go to the senior center and access it. Uh, finally, we will continue our water main flushing this week. We'll be doing that aggressively for the next two weeks after which we are anticipating starting our construction projects to replace water lines uh, when we'll start the crews will then switch from the flushing to the construction projects. Uh, this week, they'll be on Hadley between Egypt Beach Road and Jericho, Beaver Dam between Tilden and Jericho, Turner Road between Tilden and Hadley, and First Paris between Common and Kent Streets, and all the adjoining side streets and small cul-de-sacs will also be flushed during this time. So you will see some discoloration. If you're in those areas, we apologize for the inconvenience, but this is really a necessary uh, tool for us to maintain and clean out our water system. So. Hopefully when we get this done, we will start seeing, uh, as we have the last couple of years, a very marked improvement in our water quality over the summer months when demand goes up. So that's what I have for today. And at this point, um, I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Boudreau. Thank you, uh, Ms. Karn. Um, so for our COVID update uh, for the public schools, we've got uh, four cases last week. Uh, keep in mind, the is an abbreviated week. We had school four days instead of five, uh, but those numbers are, are low. In previous weeks, we've been averaging seven or eight in the past month. So um, we've got a total of 186 total cases as of 4-1 for the school year. And our school community is notified uh, each evening uh, when the cases uh, happen. And if they happen over the weekend, we notify each Monday. We'll continue to do that. Um, an important update from Commissioner Riley on MCAS, um, as it seems to be um, information comes in ongoing. So the commissioner uh, has announced last week that he will be recommending to the uh, Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. They modify the state graduation requirements for the class of 2022. If approved, this year's 11th graders will not be required to take the MCAS test. In addition, the timeline for administering the tests in grades three through eight and grades 10 will be extended until June 11th in an effort to provide maximum flexibility for school districts. Uh, current juniors and seniors may still take the test this spring to qualify for the Adams Scholarship 
and the uh, Coplex cert Certificate of Mastery. So juniors who do not participate this spring will be able to test for scholarships during the retest period in the fall of 21. So some options there for our juniors and seniors. We'll be notifying them and their parents pending the vote by the full board. In addition, the Department um, of Elementary and Secondary Education will offer remote administration of the ELA and math and science assessments this spring for grades three through eight to accommodate families who choose to have their children learn remotely through the end of the school year. You know, that's been a question a lot of people were asking. Uh, we've just gotten that guidance. So the department will provide school districts with additional information in coming weeks. So we will get that information out to you as soon as we receive it. As far as our uh, safe and strong updates, um, we had a wonderful opening for our K-5 to full in-person learning uh, last week. And uh, I want to thank our great staff and administrators for all their preparation that went into making that a smooth transition for our students and their families our PTOs for helping us celebrate what we were calling uh, opening day, and our students and families, of course, for your continued patience and resiliency. Uh, the return has been highly successful and we will continue to assess, tweak things and improve as needed. Opening day for grades six through 12 will be um, next Monday, April 12th, and we're excited to see our students back to in full person learning at the secondary level as well. And we are working closely with uh, Chief Thompson and the Situa Police Department. I want to thank them, give them a shout out. They've been outstanding as we anticipate uh, increased traffic as more students and families are driving this year and, and less are taking the bus. Um, and we know the situation at the gates in the high school is already um, an issue for traffic. Uh, the good news is we have secured some parking. And I want to thank St. Luke's across the street for offering spaces for our students to park, our juniors and seniors. And we are working with the uh, Chief Thompson and the police to have uh, police officers out at the opening of school and the closing of school to assist with traffic flow in with safety. And finally, uh, a couple things. Uh, Sailor shout out to Miss Hall in the uh, Situate High School Honors Journalist, journalist class for uh, inviting me to a uh, press conference. They, um, they drilled me with some outstanding questions from everything from COVID to graduation, uh, to bringing students back. And it was an um, excellent opportunity for me to connect with the students. And uh, I will say our future is bright and it was great to be in person with our kids. Uh, and finally, an upcoming school committee meeting will be April 12th, it'll be a short meeting. Uh, we will, however, be introducing our new DEI director at that meeting before heading off into town meeting. So I look forward to seeing everybody there. Have a great week, everyone, and thank you. Great, thank you, Bill, thank you, Jim. Bill, was your um, interview recorded? Can people see it? I don't, I will have to ask Ms. Hall, I'm not sure. It was on Zoom, it was a hybrid model because we're kids at home on Zoom. So if that's gotcha. the case, I'd be happy to release it. I think there was a lot of good information shared. And I'll yeah. make sure I'll, uh, yeah, I'll edit out the, uh, any snafus I have. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Seth's for, the man behind exactly. the camera. Exactly, make me look good, yep. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. So thank you, really happy that the kids are getting back to school. I know you all are too, lots of work to make that happen and you know thank you to our facilities team as well that's making that happen so it takes a lot of folks to bring all those kids back in so that's great news okay. um sorry, to, oh, sorry. go ahead Jim. To congratulate the superintendent on and his team they had a much more successful opening week than the red sox did <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that's a low bar jim that was a low bar <laughs> <laughs> you do better than that yeah well, thanks everyone. I just want to say, hey, just keep wearing your mask. We're almost there and uh, let's do our due diligence to help stop the spread so we can get our numbers down and uh, make it a great week. We'll see you all at a town meeting. <laughs>